wanna be where you are. Good morning and welcome to Generation Church. We are so excited that you're joining us today and happy new year. Happy New Year. Today is the very first Sunday of 2021. Hope you had an incredible holiday season celebrating the birth of Jesus and then also ringing in the new year with whoever that you brought it in with. We are so excited that we're here. 2021, we are coming for you. And let me just encourage you really quick, if, uh, if your situation, if your circumstance hasn't changed just because the calendar has flipped, Listen, here at Generation Church, we believe that God is still in control. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. So whatever you're going through, maybe the calendar uh, flipping didn't change that and you're still going through something in your life, a circumstance or something that you're struggling with, God is in control. He's got you. He wants you to know that he loves you and that he cares about you. And 2021 is going to be your year. So we're super excited that you're joining us, that you're with us, that you're a part of this thing, because I'm telling you the best is yet to come for you and for this church. Every week we say it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Click the subscribe button right below and also the bell notification. Follow us on social media at GC underscore reach is the best way to stay in contact. In a few weeks, we're going to be releasing our cruise. And if anybody knows about our cruise, let me tell you, cruise are where it is at. And there's a crew for you. Be sure to check out our our website. Go to gcreach.org and click the cruise tab uh, over the next couple weeks as we release them. It's going to be exciting times ahead here. And uh, and we just want you to, to know that you belong and you have a place here at Generation Church. And let me just take a moment really quick and tell you that everything that we accomplished as the body of Christ in 2020 only happened because of your generosity. So I just want to thank you so much for your generosity and for giving to the ministry. Here at Generation Church, we say generosity is our privilege. We consider it a privilege to give. And and the thing is, is that God doesn't need your money. It's not like you give your money to God and and he's like, oh yes, I really needed that $20 bill. or I really needed that tithe. I, I needed that. That's not what he's looking for. He's not looking for your money. He's looking for your obedience, for your reverence, for your trust. God is looking for you to trust in him fully with all areas of your life, including your finances. And it's only because of your generosity that we were able to accomplish all that we did in 2020. And uh, let me tell you, there's some exciting things ahead for 2021. So uh, we thank you so much. And if you want to take that step to give today, you can go to our website, click the giving tab, and there are many ways that are safe and secure to give to the ministry. So we thank you so much because your generosity is making a difference. All right, today uh, we're going to be diving into God's word. I'm super pumped to preach first year of 2021. I'm excited. I feel like God has given me a message for you, uh, for you to to empower you, to encourage you, to inspire you. uh, Because let me tell you, it's a new year. It's a new year. And uh, we all say a new year, new me. We want to start something new, start something fresh. Uh, So I'm going to bring you a message today that I feel God has placed in my spirit about new, about what it means to be new. And, uh, And I pray that it blesses you. So let's take out our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So this is a a letter that Paul wrote to the church of Corinth. And this is the second letter that he wrote. So he had been writing to the church for quite some time. And and he had just been encouraging them and helping them and guiding them. And so Paul knew the Corinthians. He knew them at at a certain level. And so he wanted to continue to to give them wisdom. And and, and all that the Holy Spirit was speaking to him, he wanted to uh, share with them. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 15. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 15. Let's read together. He died for everyone. I've just got to pause right there and just, first of all, tell you who I'm talking about. Uh, Paul is talking about Jesus. Jesus died for everyone. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever, whoever you are today, wherever you're at in your life, You are that everyone. Jesus died for you so that you can live in peace and joy 
so that you don't have to worry about uh, all, the, all the bad decisions you've made in your past. But he died for you. I just off the, off the get, I want to let you know that Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life for you. Paul says he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. Verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Anyone. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Verse 20, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. And we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So that you and I can be made right with God through Christ. Oh man, I'm, I'm so pumped to preach this message and share this with you. If you could write down the title of my message today, All Things New. All Things New. Let's start 2021 off right in a new way, in a fresh way. Let's pray together as we dive deeper into God's word. Father, I thank you so much for every single person, Lord. We are so grateful for every single person tuning in that are listening to your message, that are worshiping with us, that continue to grow in faith through you, Lord. We are grateful. And Lord, we ask right now that as we enter into 2021, that you have the best for us. So we ask for your grace, for your mercy, for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your discernment. Lord, we we thank you for 2020 and the year that it was, the good, the bad, the ugly, And as we enter into 2021, we ask for fresh vision, for a fresh fire, an anointing from the Holy Spirit that carries us through, and that we have an incredible year, because we understand that the best is yet to come in your presence. So we love you. We honor you. Bless this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So I'm I'm all about getting something new. Like, I love new. New is great. New is exciting for me. Um, new is something that, that I, uh, you know, I, I mean, we go on like Amazon or on, we're scrolling through Instagram or whatever, and the newest thing comes up and we want to get it. And, and, you know, shopping for the kids this, this Christmas was exciting because uh, we wanted to get the newest thing. And it's super cool. And we all want new. We, we are a society that is surrounded by new. The newest thing comes and we want to gravitate to it. We want to jump on it. We want to be a part of it. New is exciting to us. But what if I told you that new may not always be nice? New may not always be nice. I, uh, I was on a, uh, iPhone eight plus. So this is my old phone that I, that I was using an iPhone eight plus. Um, so I was due for an upgrade. It's been a couple of years since I used the iPhone, I, since I got an upgrade and I love the iPhone. I have everything on my iPhone. Um, I do a lot on my phone, uh, in regards to whether it's note taking, whether it's, you know, syncing up my calendar with my wife or whatever, like there's a lot of stuff that I do on my phone. And so just naturally when the new, newer phone came out, the new iPhone 12 came out, I wanted it. There was a desire on the inside of me to want it. And uh, this phone was probably two and a half, almost three years old. Uh, and so when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, wow, that iPhone 12 is pretty pricey, but I'm due for an upgrade. So I'm not paying on this phone anymore. So, you know, I think, you know, we can handle it. So I looked at this phone and I'm like, man, there's so many differences between this old phone 
and this new phone, right? So this is the new iPhone 12 and it's, it's great. It's got, you know, it looks very different. Let's just say that. And so for me, maybe a lot of you have the whole face ID thing and the full screen thing and everything. For me, this was new. This, this thing was new for me because I was still had the touch ID. So I was using touch to sign in and do all my, do all my things. Well, one thing that I noticed about the new iPhone is that there's some bugs that have to get worked out. There's some things that when you get something new, specifically technology and the iPhone, uh, there's always updates that are coming. Constantly you're updating your phone because they're fixing that bug and they're fixing this bug and they're fixing this. And it's like, oh my goodness, like this thing is new, but like it's not very nice uh, to, to work on this thing constantly because it's always getting updated. And another thing that I noticed is so annoying to me and it's, it's frustrating, it's great, but it's frustrating. Uh, I'm not used to the whole face ID thing. Okay. So, you know, I'm used to pressing my thumb on it and then it opens up the screen. Now with the face ID, you just stick your face in front of it and the iPhone opens, which is great. But uh, when you want to take a screenshot of something with the old phone, you have to use your thumb and you press the side button and it takes the screenshot or whatever. With the new iPhone, with the iPhone 12, with the newer one, you just press two buttons. Well, this is how I hold my phone when I'm like working on something. And I, I cannot tell you how many times I've inadvertently taken a screenshot on the iPhone, on the new iPhone. I mean, I don't know if this is something that you struggle with. Uh, I, I feel very, uh, uh, I, feel, I feel like a fool every time I do this because I'll be listening to something or I'll be on the phone with somebody or I'll be typing and then boom, I just, boom, take a screenshot of, of what, what, whatever I'm doing. And so in my photos, I just got screenshots and I don't take time to delete them, but I was looking through my phone the other day and I'm like, why do I have all these screenshots? What is this? It's constantly, all I'm doing is taking screenshots because I don't know how to hold the phone. Uh, it's kind of a silly thing that I'm sharing with you right now. And really in this grand scheme of life, it's not a big deal that I'm taking screenshots on my new iPhone. Uh, but let me tell you that sometimes the newest thing, it's not very nice. It's not very nice. There's some things that you got to work out. There's some bugs that got to gotta be, be, be fixed on the inside. And uh, we always want the newest things. But I wonder if sometimes it's not very nice because there's some things that got to get worked out. And maybe if you're entering 2021 and you're looking back on 2020 and you're saying, wow, wow, that was a hard year. That was a lot going on. But there's a new year. This is a new year that I'm excited for. I'm pumped for. I'm pumped for this new year. I just don't want you to walk into 2021 without the bugs fixed from 2020, without the things that, that, that God really wants to work on in your spirit, in your heart, the things that really, really God wants to, he wants to work out of you so that you can fulfill all that he has for you. Because each and every one of us are not perfect. We could go into the next year and be excited about it, uh, but still have that depression still have that anxiety, still have that fear, that doubt, still have those things that were gripping us in 2020 as we walk into 2021. And I want to encourage you today that a life in Christ is brand new. It is brand new. The Bible tells us that the new has come and the old is gone. The new has come and the old has gone. So I want to jump back to 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 15 again, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 15. And, and really quick, just to let you know, uh, when I gave my life to Christ, when I surrendered my life to him and I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to live for you. There was some bugs that needed to be worked out. There were some things in my past. There were decisions that I made. There were things that I, that I did that still needed to get worked out. And so for, for us, when we come into a relationship with Jesus as a Christian, don't think that, it's, it's that, that all the bugs have gone away. That's what this, this journey is. This journey is growing and, and God is molding you and shaping you and taking you to that next level. But he wants you to understand that he wants to be with you through it all. He wants to be with you every single day. Every single day is new with Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. No longer will you live for yourself, but you will live for Christ. I want you to write this down this morning. 
Write this down. New is not always nice because it may require a no. New is not always nice because it may require a no. It may require a no. Oh, I don't like saying no. That's, that's not my thing. Saying no is not my thing. I'm a yes man. I like to uh, help people. I like to, you know, if there's something that they need, I want to do my best to, to assist in that. No is something that I've had to, I've had to work hard into my vocabulary because I can tell you right now that it, it does, just doesn't come natural to me. No doesn't come natural to me. But when you are living this, this life for Christ, when something new comes into your life, something fresh, you're going to have to say no to some other things. You're going to have to say no maybe to the mindset of 2020. You're going to have to say no to the mindset that said, we're never going to get out of this pandemic. Nothing ever is going to come good out of it. You're, you're just going to be stuck. You're going to be in this place for the rest of your life. Uh, the depression that you sunk into in 2020, you got to say, start saying no to it. When something new comes up in your life, when something new arises, it may require you to say no to something else. Maybe there's people in your life that were holding you down, that were speaking negativity over your life in all of 2020 because of their own situation that they were going through. They didn't know how to handle themselves, so they projected their negativity on you. Maybe you got to start saying no to them. Maybe it's time that you uh, just took a step back from them in your life and you said, you know what? I'm moving forward with Christ and I'm going to start saying no more often. You know, there's never a bad time to start something new. There's never a bad time to say, you know what? I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to start uh, going to the gym. I'm going to start uh, diving into God's word in the morning. I'm going to start my day in prayer. I'm going to start this. There's never a bad time to start something new. But maybe in 2020, you fell into this comfort level. You know, you're working from home. You're constantly, uh, you know, you're constantly just focusing on what's in front of you. You're not you're not going out. You're not exploring what's out there. Maybe you just fell into this comfort, this, this, this just, you're just, you're good. And this complacency, this spirit of complacency came over you. Maybe you, maybe you need to say no to comfort in 2021 and branch out a little bit and, and really explore all that God has for you. You know, I want to read Mark 10, 45. It says, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And, and maybe in 2021, you got to step out of your comfort zone. Maybe serve somebody that you uh, wouldn't necessarily come in contact with. Maybe uh, this is a year for you to, to branch off a little bit, to, to do something that is outside of this, this complacency that you find yourself in. Because I can tell you right now that as you test those boundaries of comfortability, God will move in your life in such an incredible way. Well, you know, I, I've, never, I've, never, I've, never, I've never been part of a crew. I've never joined a crew. I've never, it's not my thing. I don't really feel comfortable doing it. Uh, let me encourage you. It'll change your life. It'll be one of the best things for you. As we release crews, these, this is an incredible opportunity for you to share your life with other people. Stepping out of this complacency and this comfort and being in a place where God can mold you and he can shape you and he can do things with your life. You know, receiving Christ is a gift. It's a gift that we all have. It's a gift that we can all just receive his love and his grace, but it also carries a responsibility. And this is what Paul was trying to communicate to the church at Corinth, that there's a responsibility attached to this new life that you have found in Christ. Let's read in verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. So we have, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become what? A new person. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. So I want you to write this down this morning. Write down my second point. You belong is a reminder of new. 
you belong is a reminder of new. You know, you belong, this phrase that we say, this thing that I close every single message with, it's not just a saying. It's not just this cool, nice, pretty new phrase that we came up with. This is the DNA of who we are. This is embedded into the culture of Generation Church. We want people to know that you belong. So let's jump back to verse 17, because verse 17, it, for me, it's, it's changed my life. Verse 17 is one of the verses that I literally live by. Verse 17, here's what it says. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. If you've ever questioned your, pers- your purpose in, in life, if you've ever questioned what God has created you to do, if you've asked yourself, why am I here on this earth? Let me answer that question for you. It's to belong, to belong. You belong. You belong to the body of Christ. You belong to a community. You have a place in this family of God. It is to belong. Whoever belongs to Christ is a new person. If you're looking for new, it's only found in Christ. You belong. I want you to say that with me right now. I know I'm not going to hear anything on this side of the screen, but you belong. Let's say it together. You belong. And if you're sitting here and you're saying, well, what do I belong to? Who do I belong to? That's the greatest question that you could ask yourself. Who do you belong to? Because if you're going to sit here and say, I do belong to the body of Christ. I do belong. I do have a place. You better understand who you belong to. You belong to Jesus. You belong to the Savior of the world. You belong to the one that, that knew you, knew you before you were even born. When you were in your mother's womb, God knew you and he knows everything about you. You belong to the one that loves you unconditionally. You belong to, to the one that, that has, 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 has already seen your story, that you are just living out what he has already written. Let me tell you right now that it is one of the greatest stories, that your story what God is doing in your life and what he's going to continue to do is that very thing that helps others see God. It's that very thing that brings other people into this family that we have. You belong. It's in our DNA. And let me tell you, it's in the DNA of the family of God. You belong. You have a place here. And you belong only comes when it's found in Christ. All right, Kev, so, so what do you mean by the, the old life is gone and the new life has come? All right, so what does that whole thing mean? Because like, I kind of like my life, so what are you saying that my, my entire life is going to be gone and I'll just get like this new one? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, want, I want you to understand this, this word life in the Greek translation. This word life, it translated as zoe. Zoe is this word life in the Greek. And this word literally means to a state of being alive, a state of being alive. And I don't know this past year that you've experienced in 2020, if you felt like, man, some things are just, they're just dead. They're just not alive in my life. I don't have the excitement. I don't have the the happiness. I don't have the joy that I used to. Well, there's life in Christ and it is a state of, of being alive. If you want to feel that, that joy and that happiness and, and you want to live a life that is, that is full of all these things that we are longing for on a daily basis, it is found in life in Christ. That's the new life that he's talking about, that you wake up every single morning and you have a purpose and a plan and you're ready to go and you're sharing Christ with other people and you're bringing them into, into, into the fold here and, and that you are the one that is, that is able to impact a generation because of what he's called you to. This new life, this zoe is a state of being alive, exuberant, being excited about every day that you wake up in the morning. Let's keep reading in verse 18. Verse 18 says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him 
For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. I just want to pause right there and I want to give you the definition of reconciliation because this, this, this word reconciliation has so much meaning. It's such a, a depth, uh, it has so much depth to it that I want to give you the definition of reconciliation. The act of reestablishing a relationship that was broken. Reestablishing a relationship that was broken. So if, if God gave us the, the task of reconciling his people to him and Christ was that, that starting point of where he reconciled us to God, then we have this, this, this task. We have this, this assignment, this mission, all of us to reconcile others to God, to reestablish a broken relationship a broken relationship with our creator because we could go all the way back to Genesis and we could read about the fall of mankind when sin entered the world and, and separated us, broke humanity from God and created this void. And then here we have Jesus, the one who reconciled us back to God. And then when we come into new life in Christ, we then take on that task of reconciling others back to God as well. That's powerful. If that doesn't give you a purpose, if that doesn't give you drive, if that doesn't give you excitement, that you and I have the ability when we come into life in Christ to then share Christ with other people, share what God has done in our own lives to draw people in, like that is exciting stuff. Why? Because it's life changing. Because a relationship with Jesus changes everything. I want to read this verse to you, this passage of scripture. In Matthew 5 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be, I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be somebody that that is helping reestablish a relationship that has been broken. I, I, I long to to, to have relationships with people that are flourishing, that are doing great. And I'm not saying that we don't have bad times. Of course, sometimes, you know, we struggle and things, we got to work some things out. But, but I long to, to help people restore relationships. And that's what God wants for your life. And that's also what he wants, the assignment that he wants to put on you is to help you reconcile relationships, one with our creator, but also our horizontal relationships with the ones around us. You know, maybe there's broken relationships that you've experienced this past year and you're struggling to see, okay, I'm entering a new year, uh, but I don't know how this relationship is going to be restored. I don't know how this marriage is going to come together. I don't know how this friendship is really going to be rebuilt. I have no idea. You know, the one thing that you can do is ask for help from our Lord. Help, ask, pray for God to help restore that relationship. Because I can tell you right now that that is going to be the gateway. Prayer and surrendering it to God, giving it to the Lord is going to be the gateway for that restoration. God is in the business of restoring relationships, of reconciling the broken. And each and every one of you has that ability that when you come into life in Christ, that's your task, that's your assignment. And I can tell you right now that relationships will be restored in 2021 in the name of Jesus. I believe that wholeheartedly, 100%. So as we close this morning, I want to read verse 20 and 21, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. And we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. When you come into life in Christ, this new life, when you make that decision to put Jesus first, you're given a title. You're given a title. This is your title. Reconciliation 
ambassador. That's, that, I love that title. I want that title. That title of reconciliation ambassador. That you are an ambassador for Christ. And entering 2021, I want you to, I want you to understand that, to realize that, to grasp that to really hold on to the truth that you are an ambassador for Christ and you are a reconciliation ambassador. That God has called you to reconcile the lost to him, to reconcile broken relationships, to reconcile a broken past, to defeat depression, to defeat fear, to defeat anxiety because of your title, because you're an ambassador for Christ, an ambassador for Christ. You know, the title of this message I, I put at the top, I told you to write it down, all things new. But I want you to write down the final point this morning as we close. All things are new when new is found in Christ. All things are new when new is found in Christ. When new is found in Christ, when you realize that you belong to Christ. That's where this newness, it, it, it's, not just, it's not just shiny and pretty, but it has depth to it. It has substance to it. That new, when it's found in Christ, hey, that's beautiful. That's, that's where purpose is found. That's where you start feeling the sense of fulfillment. That's where Zoe comes into the picture. That's where you start feeling alive. You have so much uh, desire to wake up in the morning and fulfill all that God has placed on you. It's when new is found in Christ. Now I want to read Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 to you this morning as we close. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. He never ceases to stop loving you. Never. His mercies never come to an end. They are what? They are new every morning. They are new every morning. And I want you to realize that we, we give God the glory and the praise and the honor. We recognize what he's done, that his mercies are new every morning. And then what do we do? We lift our hands and we say, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. God is a faithful God. And as you enter 2021, this new year, this new thing that we're all going into. Some of us wanna, wanna, wanna forget about 2020. Some of us don't even wanna remember that year. Some of us wanna rip it out of the history books uh, because of everything that happened. But I can tell you right now, just as God, God used 2020 to catapult us into this next year, there's so much that he did. And that as we enter into 2021, I want you to realize that he loves you and that he wants a relationship with you and that he wants you to be a part of this family to help reconcile people back to him, to reconcile relationships and restore them. And you have a purpose and a plan on your life. And there's so much that God has for this next year. Let me tell you, I am pumped about it. I'm excited about it. I, I, I got to be honest, we have a plan and we, we're, we have vision for it and we're excited for it. But I can tell you right now that I'm sitting back and I'm saying, God, what do you want in 2021? What do you want to do? Whatever you want to do, we trust you. We, we believe that, you, that your purpose is exactly what you have for us. We're believing in faith that 2021 is going to be the best year yet. And today, if you're listening to this message and you're like, all right, you know, I, I've, I've, I've gone back and forth. I don't know uh, kind of what the next step is, but I do know that I want this new life in Christ, that the old is gone and all things have been made new. If you're recognizing that in your life today and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you could pray this prayer after me. This is just a prayer to take that step of faith, to take that next step of trusting Jesus and surrendering your life and saying, I want that new life. I want it in my life. I want that, I want that zoe, that, that, that feeling of being alive. If that's you this morning, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I receive your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on a cross 
and rose again. I accept him into my life. I receive his grace. I receive his mercy. And I believe that the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, that's exciting. If you prayed that prayer this morning, that is extremely exciting because we want to connect with you. It's life-changing. We want to uh, resource you with a Bible or some more material and let you know uh, what this journey looks like. We want to come alongside you and be a part of it uh, because I can tell you right now that life in Christ is the greatest life you'll ever live. And also, if you uh, tune in every single week and you're a part of this, we are so thankful. Thank you so much for for engaging with us, for building this community, for being being a part of the Generation Church community. Uh, Bree and I are pumped for 2021, and we know that God is moving. He's moving in your life. He's moving in the life of, of Generation Church, and he's moving in the body of Christ, the Big C Church. There's big things that are happening this next year, and we want you to be a part of it. So remember, we love you, we care about you, and you belong. Thank you for watching Church Online this morning. Be sure to follow our social media accounts to stay updated with all that is going on at Generation Church. Have a blessed week.